Hello and welcome again to another First Hour Impressions and we are back and this time it is uh, Kentucky Route Zero something that's been in development <laughs> for a very long time to be honest and I was waiting for all the episodes to be out um, before I even you know, dip a toe into the water um, and the, f the last episode finally got released and it got released as a package as well. So the uh, on the PS4, it says the TV edition. So here we are about to press the first button uh, upon the game loading. I'm going through the splash screens. Now, I haven't touched any of the sound stuff, so this could be a bit loud in your ear and you, it might drown me out. So we'll sort that out whenever we can. Here we go. Ooh. Bloody hell, that's bright in my eyes. <laughs> Okay, choose a slot to load, blank video tape and blank audio tape. Uh, that one? So these are just the... F I'm assuming these are just the save slots. Start? Yeah? Oh, here we go. Whoa. Um, play? What the hell? Okie dokie. Limits and demonstrations, and I missed all that, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> all right. Act one, scene one. Equus oils. Equus. Equus. I don't know what that means. Oh, so I've got free movement. All right. Um, hello, dog. An old hound in a straw hat. Both have seen better days. Equus. Oh, right. Okay. Equus Oils is the uh, name of the uh, petrol station. Truck. A moving truck rumbles softly to itself. Uh, painted on its side are the words Lysette Antiques, furniture, glassware. Curiosities. So, what am I? Antiques moving? Or am I. Is that my business? Assuming it is. Okay. Um, Joseph sits between gas pumps and a Queen Anne armchair. Uh, his hair is grey and his glass is darkened. So, you've got the. Oh, it doesn't let me look at him again. Uh, so you have the eye to sort of look at the description and the this to talk, I suppose. <laughs> Damn, did you hear that wreck? Truck full of bowls. I don't know. Beer bottles, whiskey, lost a tire or something, and spilled booze and glass all over the interstate. Did you hear that wreck? Okay. Uh, what a mess. I hope they don't come down here looking for anything. We blew a damn fuse and it's all shut off. Did I hear a dog? What's your dog's name? Ooh. His name is Homer. His, her name is Blue. Just say... Just some dog. I don't know its name. Absolutely true. <laughs> sure, we got a couple of old cats that lurk around. Well, I bet he's a nice dog. Anyway, well behaved or he'd be after my dinner. Hey, here's some jerky for him. I made it myself. Didn't turn out too well, but I bet the dog will eat it. Getting late, right? I can feel the sun on my neck. I bet it's just a few feet off the horizon. I've been driving all evening looking for five dogwood drive. Okay. I've got a delivery to make on Dogwood, but I'd rather watch the sunset. Um, I'm assuming I'm going to be dropping off. Hey, I understand. You've got a job to do and you're paid to do. 
Maybe get some rest somewhere in there. Maybe have a drink. Then back on it. There's some dignity in that rhythm. So where is Dogwood Drive? How long have you been working here? What's your rhythm like? Uh, what's your rhythm like? Oh, I just listened to TV. Used to do a lot of poetry on the computer. But I don't have, an, have the ear for it lately. Listen, you dog... Yeah, you and your dog have, uh, would have been driving up and down 65 all night. Dogwood Drive is the other side of... Well, to get there, you've got to take the zero. Ooh. The zero is a bit fucked up there. Uh, zero is a tough route to find. You can use my computer to look up directions. You'll have, to, you'll have to head down to the basement and reset the circuit breaker first. I'll be happy to choose the winding lights back up anyway. I have to have those winding lights back up anyway. <laughs> Too damn quiet out there. The basement door is back there in the office. Appreciate your help, friend. Oh, and here, take this lamp. It gets dark. Okie dokie. I have lamp. So is the dog going to follow me? Okay, move it up. Oh, hang on. Oh, I can turn on and off. X turns it on and off. Simple. Left stick moves around. Right stick does nothing. L and R probably moves uh, to a different item that you need. Same as the R2 and R1. Am I in? I'm in. Oh, yes, I am. Cool. Whoa, no, no. Go back in there. Oh, I've got to push forwards. Here we go. I was pressing left and it kept on pulling me back out. So, circuit breaker. Sign. Oh, just... <laughs> Uh. Oh, triangle. Field notes. What does that mean? Dogwood Drive. Nothing. So I can't see the sign? Oh, hello. Basement people. Emily, Ben and Bob sit in the folding chairs behind a worn card table. Papers, oddly shaped dice, and a highway map cover the tabletop. Oh, and highway maps. Oh, hello. <clears throat> Have you all seen a breaker box down here? Oh, sorry, I didn't know there was anyone down here. Uh, did you hear something? Uh, no, sorry, I was looking at the rules again. It gets easier as you go. Look, you said you rolled a five, right? That means you get to pick up your marker and move it anywhere on the map. So it's your turn now, right? Oh yeah, I guess so. Where do you put that 20-sided die? I don't see it. Did you drop it? Uh, should be easy enough to find. It glows in the dark. No, I don't want to speak to them again. Just need to get by you for a minute. Did you lose something? I think it's rolled down a bit to the left there, but I don't see it. Well, I'm going to, to look for it. It's too dark down there. Well, I'm not going to look for it. It's too dark down there. <laughs> One of you go down and get it, and I'll just study the rules here. So move away. Oh, I clicked on... The light. It's just a rusty old sign that's bolted to the wall. So I, I, it was highlighted and I pressed X and it walked straight to it itself. Fine. Okay. These are the rules. No open flames near the gasoline. No consumption of beer or spirits on the premises. In case of sudden darkness, do not panic, relax, count backwards from five. Strictly limit time spent in the basement to fewer than three minutes of every hour. Why? Conway picks up the glowing 20-sided die and inspects it. 
The number five is facing up. It's just a small piece of plastic, but it has a reassuring, almost comforting weight. He places the object in his jacket pocket. Let's turn his light back on. Okay, look. So I don't have to walk. I can actually. Oh, hello. What was that? Um. I can actually just. If it's if it's if it's highlighted green, I can go to it. So table. Folding chairs are rearranged around in a worn card table. The chairs are empty, and the surface of the table is bare. Conway places the twenty-sided die on the table. Conway keeps the twenty-sided die in his pocket and walks away. Eh, I'm going to put it back. That's what they wanted. Breaker. Okay. Exit. Get out of here. The lights are on, sir. Joseph. There it is. Just listen to those lights, why not? Yep. Well, I'd better be I'd better get those directions and head to the zero, if you don't mind. There were some people down in your basement playing some kind of game, but they're gone now? In the basement? No, I don't think so. Maybe that lamplight was playing tricks on you, huh? Well, strange things happen underground, especially in the dark. So, computer's in the office. You're looking for Marquez. She knows her way around these roads. She'll get you to the zero. The password is... Uh... Damn. I usually just feel it out. Muscle memory, you know? It's kind of long, kind of like a short poem, I think. One of those short poems that really sums it all up. You'll figure it out. So, I've got to figure out a password. Okay. wonder if it's going to be a... No! I pressed the wrong... <sighs> it's like, it is a point and click. Just walk it. There we go. Click it. Good. Press down, down a bit more. Computer! Conway taps the key. Waken the computer from its reverie. User. Typing Conway. Typing Joseph. Uh, Joseph. Password. Ooh. Wheels slide loose. The stars drop away. I talk and listen to him talking. The stars. The stars drop away. Nobody saw the accident. The moon throbs. It's late. The stars drop away. Nobody saw the accident. You just breathe the road. Password accepted. Shouting. How's it going in there? Figure it all out. Sure you are. Messages. Address book. Games. Uh, let's get nosy. <laughs> Message one is from Donald Hot MK Mail. Message 2 is from Accounts Consolidated Mail. Read message 1, read message 2, read message 1. From Donald. Subject, Fragments of Dimly Lovely Forms. Of Dim Lovely Forms. I know it's been a while, and I know you're still sore. There's a whole world in there, and we need your help to unmask it. Yes, the caves are cold and damp, we are old and lame. Never mind. I can't remember why I even started writing this. I miss those days in the lab with you and our D 
dear Lula. Huh. Maybe you found your own Zandu. Zandu. Well, so have I. End of message. Message one is from Donald. Message two is from accounts. Read message two. From accounts. Accounts standing urgent. Dear Equisoils. This is an urgent automated message that your account is overdue by more than 14 days. In response, we have switched you to low reliability dirt power dirty power plus plan. <laughs> Consider making a payment immediately to obviate the need for us to switch you to the sustained brownout select. <laughs> Sincerely, your friends at the Consolidated Power Co. End of message. Okay. All right, let's get out of here. So I have a feeling that there's been a crash and we were the crash. Just That's just my hunch. Address book. Oh, address book. Here we go. Typing. The zero. Typing. Dogwood Drive. Marquez. So we're looking for Marquez, but let's go through all these. Uh, the zero is not real. Okay. Dogwood Drive. What? It's nothing real? Please tell me you're real. Ah, there we go. Head northeast on 65 and turn left as soon as you see the ugly trees that's always on fire. Look for the barn at the base of the mountain there. Can't miss it. Got it? Out there on Macondo somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey, look. While you're the, down there, I loaded that old TV of mine into your truck. I borrowed that thing from Weaver Marquez a number of years ago. And now that the number, and now that the power is all weird over here, I can't pick up anything. But static and public access anyway. She was always more of a reader. But maybe she'd want it back at home. It's a nice TV. Let's leave. Uh, he's got anything else last to say? Sun's gone down. You and your dog better get on that road if you're gonna make your delivery. Okay. No, I want to speak to the dog. Yep. Yeah, all right. So you can press C circle button to. Hurry along the text, it looks like. Uh, scratches behind the dog's right ear. How's it going, old man? Take it easy, old man. What do you think of this place? How about a treat? You know what? Just realised. Yep. Uh, audio. There we go. Captions. All right, maybe that's a little bit easier for your ear. Should have checked that, really. I've checked it. Um, what do you think of this place? What do you think of this place? It's odd. I never really noticed it driving by. Seems like they're really on the rocks. Hmm, how about a treat? Here's some jerky from the gas station attendant. Uh, let's save it for later. Take it easy, old man. Alright, alright, alright. Let's get in there. Conway gets back on the road. Oh, okay. Um, whoa, what am I doing? Wreck? I completely forgot where we were going. 
Let's have a look. Ooh. This doesn't look good. The fridge? Conway shakes his head. What a mess, huh? What a waste, right? What is it? That gas station attendant was right. What do you think? Do you think anyone was hurt? Uh, booze and glass all over the interstate. I bet he could hear each bottle break. So this is just booze. I thought it looked like um, coffins for a second. Can I not go any further on the right? I don't think I can. No, won't let me. All right. Let's go, dog. Back in my truck. Conway doesn't want to stay any longer. Conway gets distracted. What do I get distracted by? Can I cross the road? No, I can't. That's all. Let's go back in. Let's go. Now. 65. Glasgow Road. Louisville Road. Oh, I can, I can actually move where I want to. Plum Springs Road, Interstate 65, Porter Pike. Oh, diner. Hello. Uh, the diner doesn't appear to have a name. A vinyl banner slung above the door simply reads 24 hours. It only has one window behind which the blinds are tightly closed. Let's try the door. The door swings open easily. A bell rings nearby. The interior of the diner is pitch black. Wait for a moment to adjust the darkness. A bit of errant light from the nearby highway creeps through the open door. And gradually, Conway is able to make out a few figures inside. Two old men in trucker hats sit in a corner booth with the checkers board set in the table between them. They're all playing checkers or something. A young woman standing behind the counter in an apron. Must be a waitress. The cook stares blankly from the kitchen. The door slams shut. And the room is dark again. Sit down at the computer. Try to open the door and leave. Sit down at the computer. Counter, not computer. Go, oh, my eyes. Um, he hits his knee on something hard and metallic, winces quietly, and then carefully finds his way to a stool. He places his hand on the counter. Another hand, a young woman's, rests itself on his. She guides his fingers to a lamented menu. Lam laminated. <laughs> lamented. My God, this menu. Uh, Conway loses his eyes. God, I'm losing mine. Opens them. Maybe closes them again. Impossible to differentiate. Order coffee. Order waffles. Ask her about the basketball game. Uh, it's dark. I need some coffee. A coffee of, a cup of coffee would do it. Black, oily, even hot. Familiar diner coffee. Conway runs his hand down the menu. The surface is unform uniformly flat and as slick with condensation. He feels a warm hand against his cheek and freezes. Her fingers run across the stubble of his chin. He feels like apologising. She leans forward and so does he. What? Huh? 
Can I go down? Nope, can't go down. Old Bowling Green Road. I'm just going to Rocky Hill. Just explore. Let's see if I can find anything around here. Increase oils. No. I was supposed to. Oh, Barren River. The exterior of the Barren River Rural Electronic, sorry, Electric Cooperative Corporation is a dingy beige, sprinkled with fading graffiti. The front door hangs open from a broken hinge. The windows are dark. Look in a window. Enter the front door. Drive away. Look at the window. The windows are too dirty to see anything inside, but a few dim shapes, furniture maybe, or livestock. Enter the front door. The room feels empty with no furniture other than the built-in front desk. Host to a disconnected telephone and a few empty beer cans. Meandering lines of colour have been sprayed painted along the walls. Behind the desk, a hallway leads into the darkness. Pick up the telephone into the hallway, leave the building, into the hallway. The hallway passes several smaller office doors. Uh, it quickly disappears into darkness. Something is glowing in the distance, barely. Try an officer too. One of the office doors is locked. Or still locked. Uh, another has been broken open. The door handle bent awkwardly inwards and embedded in the wood, but it's jammed against a filing cabinet. On closer inspection through the crack in the door, the whole room is filled with filing cabinets and other disused furniture. The hallway passes several smaller offices. It quickly disappears into darkness. Something is glowing in the distance, barely. Walk to the end of the hall. <clears throat> the door at the far end of the hallway is tightly closed, but a warm glow bleeds from its edges. Open the door. The handle is loose and the door swings open easily. The hallway fills with warmth, light, and the smells of smoke and coffee. About a dozen men and women sit around a campfire in the middle of a large room. Cubicle walls have been cut into pieces, some leaning up against the walls, and some arranged into stacks of firewood. One of the women waves to Conway and offers him an empty chair. It's missing wheels, but it's comfortable easily adjustable to his height. Someone takes a pot hung above the fire and pours coffee into a styrofoam cup. Conway accepts it and they all return to watching the fire. Question. So, because I asked for coffee at the other place and didn't get any, does it affect what I get here? What if I got waffles? Hmm, I don't know. Okay. Scottsville Road. Let's go left. Oh, hang on, before we do. Rogers. Okay. Lower Rogers. Um, probably. Cleveland Avenue. Cumberland Park. Where I should go back up left, really. Chris Oils. Um. Louisville Road. Pig Road. Browns. Oh, right, hello. This is quite big. Left. There we go. Morgantown Road. Church? Let's have a look at the church. A singing chorus echoes from within the church. The building is one story tall with a pitched roof and three story spire rising from the and a three-story spire rising from the front. The top section of the spire is made of stained glass. An interior light illuminates the pines in red, green, and blue. A large LED displays, display glows in the parking lot. Light of the last great awakening Baptist church. Into the church, listen, drive away. Conway approaches the church doors. The front doors of the church are modest and worn. They are locked. Walk around the rear, rear of the building. A ramp leads up from a few dusty metal trash cans to the church's back door. Look at the trash cans. Uh, Conway opens a few of the trash cans and looks in. 
One has a bit of something leafy and rotten stuck at the bottom of it. Another is full of unlabeled videotapes. Uh... Enter the church's back door. He finds himself in the kitchen, lit by buzzing fluorescent ceiling, lit by a buzzing fluorescent ceiling fixture. On the counter are a plate of mouldy bread and an empty Dixie cup flecked red around its waxy rim. A set of swinging plastic doors on the far wall lead out of the kitchen. Walk through the plastic doors. Vacant pews sprawl unevenly in the church. A small raised stage lies to Conway's right, bare except for a tape recorder. The tape recorder's power cord runs to an outlet near Conway's feet. Unplug. Oh, that was annoying my ears. The singing stops. The lights for fail. Okay. Can't go in that way, can I? Nope. Sunfish Road. Let's go up this way. Dog Creek Road. Cub Highway. Pinoyo. Hang on. Triangle. There we go. Directions from Equus Oils. <laughs> Maybe I should have looked at this first. Head northeast on 65 and turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. Of course. Just going to see if there's anything else around here. Probably not. Ooh, hello. Can't go anywhere. <laughs> we shall... on the 88 guitar player hello a young man in grey stained clothes sits by the side of the road he is playing a worn guitar to his left is a blue mug and to his right is a weathered dog listen Conway stands and listens the young man strums absently on the guitar hums tunelessly and occasionally mumbles a word Put a dollar in the cup. Conway pulls a wrinkled dollar bill out from his back pocket and puts it in the young man's cup. The young man stops playing, pulls the wet dollar bill out of his whiskey and hands it back to Conway. <laughs> oh, maybe I shouldn't. So, okay. Look, gotta look for a burning tree. Oh no, wrong one. <laughs> burning tree. Now I want to explore. Can't hurt. I'm assuming that the uh, any other buildings or any other places would disappear quite easily. Hang on, what? Oh, I thought I could hear someone. Hmm. Maybe not. Oh, dragonflies. There we go. The truck jerks towards the shoulder, nearly run off the road by a swarm of dragonflies. Their wings beat briefly in the headlights and disappear into the night. Burning tree. A tall black oak burns on the hill above the road. So we've got to turn left from here. Marquee. So it looks like that's added to my journal. Fair enough. Act 1, Scene 2. Marquez Farmhouse. Right, dog. Pretty dark out here, huh? So I guess we just head up the path here the farmhouse is up the hill of it keep an eye on the truck all right maybe i can borrow you a treat up there keep an eye on the truck okie dokie lamp a street lamp lights the base of a dusty path leading up the hill now do i have that tv
No, I'm staying for a while. I'm not moving on just yet. I don't want to go just yet. Nope. Oh. Wasn't paying attention. There we go. Hmm. Ah. That's nice. Graveyard. Okie dokie. A family graveyard is set off to the side of the house. Headstones are inscribed with the surnames of the unfortunate. Nawakowski, Padilla, Marquez. Okay. Is there anything else? Can I go left? It's all very subtle. I quite like it. Uh, light switch. Hello? I was, I was just thinking of what a lovely house we have. Do you like it? Have you been here before? Did you happen to see an owl? Who's Weaver? Sure, it's a nice house. No, I've never been here before. I didn't see any owl. Sure, it's a nice house. <laughs> I know. I like the large beams that run across the ceilings. I like to sit in the house and think of the hills and bluffs surrounding us. I like a... Like a cradle. There used to be another house here. But we had it destroyed. And we built this one. And it was very expensive. And we got quite underwater what what do you do for work is it too difficult or do you like it very much I was once once a mathematician are you looking for something in particular here but this is a bit of a weird interaction I'm absolutely honest um, I drive deliveries for a small antique shop it's better than being in a ditch I'm looking for the zero. I assume I'm doing this. I drive deliveries for a small antique shop. I believe it's hard times for a small antique shop. It's hard times everywhere. Even out here on our little farm. My parents stopped paying the bank a while back. I shouldn't even be here. But I just stayed. I have some notebooks. I'm only a little bored. I might prefer to watch TV occasionally. Uh, Joseph says you're too smart to watch TV. Actually, I have a TV here. I think that belongs to you. Will you please set it up? And I can explain to you how you get where you're going. The zero, I know. Okay. This is so weird. Okay. Weaver. That's not how it's supposed to look. You've made a mistake setting it up. Is it a foreign object to you? Which of your parents was the was it who wouldn't allow you to watch television? What? Ma thought she heard ghosts in the static. Dad thought it was the radioactive. I know how to set up a TV. Okay, I'm skeptical. <laughs> You have it all backwards. I'm not surprised, are you? I'm not surprised. Are you? <laughs> have you been paying attention? I don't think you have. It's time to start paying attention now, Conway. Look closely at the television. Okie dokie. Have I supposed to be paying attention to things like really paying attention? Okay. Two horses, barn, weird swirly thing. Hey, hey, wake up. You spaced out there for a minute. 
Uh, the picture on the TV, what do you keep in that barn? The picture on the TV. That TV is picking up the wrong signal. My cousin Shannon would know more about it. She fixes TVs for a li living. Well, she used to. <laughs> I think the new models are giving her, giving her some trouble. So, I really just need to get to the zero, your cousin? I'm just curious. All right. That's my father's brother's daughter, <laughs> Shannon. We're about the same age. Well, we used to be. She's older now. What? Okay, everyone's inferring that they're kind of subtly dead. We used to be. She's older now. It's the only way that she can be older now. Uh, she has a workshop up north, a ways by the lake. Right where uh, Peonia and Wax Root Road meet. God damn it, I hate words I can't pronounce. Uh, it's, a <laughs> it's a big bait and tackle shop. And she fixes TVs in the back. Do you like fishing? Why on earth is she asking me about fishing? Honestly, I'm not convinced you should bother with a zero. I'd much rather you find my cousin and fix my TV. But I'll get you to head to the right way. So it's pretty easy. Get back on the 65 heading north. Then take the first right out of the artificial limb factory. From there, your arrival at the zero is basically inevitable. So, but the... F okay. Nice to know you, Conway. Keep your eyes open, especially in the dark. Okie doke. Am I really supposed to be paying attention to that? Uh, the... I... <laughs> Damn it! Alright, okay, so... What I'm thinking here is that I've got two places I could possibly go to, two destinations. I could either fix the TV or go to where I'm supposed to go. Can I walk around? Yes, I can. Stove. No! I want to go back in. I want to look at the stove. God damn it. Back in we go. Oh, and a sink. Uh, okay, that's how we look at different things. L and R. Uh, the abandoned spiderweb stretches across the bottom of the saucepan. A skillet is seasoned with dust. Okay. Uh, a disused wood-burning stove is set up in one ash-dusted corner of the room. It is cold to the touch. All right, all right, all right. Can I go downstairs? It does not look like I can. Fine. So, was she real? Just wondering, graveyard. Let's look at this again. Family grid of set to the right of the house. Headstones are described with the surnames of the fortunate. Nawakowski, Padilla, Marquez. All right. <laughs> right, dog. There are some horses out there behind the house. I just met the strangest lady. She seemed pretty nice. She's kind of creeped me out, buddy. <laughs> Marquez, I wonder where her folks are from. I hope we see her again. Um, okay. Com has nowhere to go. 
Yeah. Oh, we can. So let's have a look in our pressing triangle. Pressing the X button. Direction from the Marquis Farm. Uh, up north a ways by the lake. Right where the Panera and Rax Road meet. It's a big bait and tackle shop. And she fixes TVs in the back. Oh, hang on. So it is the same place. Oh, that's the Shannon's workshop. Up north a ways by the lake. What? Nope. Anything different? Nope. Nothing. Factory? Uh, a creek runs alongside the highway and then turns toward a dirty brick building. A grinding drone from the w from within the building is faintly audible from the interstate. Floodlights on the lawn illuminate st uh, smokestacks. Reading is hard. Uh, at the edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign, partly obscured by the trees, reads, A Mer Artificial Limb Factory. Okay. There's plenty of roads. Bacon Creek. Persifil Road. Hang on. Have I just passed it and I wasn't really paying attention? Oh, hang on. On ramp. What is this? Uh, El Corner Valley. Have I just accidentally progressed the story when I should have probably looked at where the <sighs> the TV repair was? Um. Can I get back in the truck? Eh, I'm here. I might as well. Alright, dog. What we got to see? Can we brush us some dirt off the dog's hat? How's it going, old man? Huh? Not sure that lady was right about on the own ramp to the zero, but... Being here, hey, you got something on your hat. <laughs> Been digging in Lysette's flowers again. Did you pick that up off the road? Don't you ever get tired of nosing around strange places? <laughs> you like it, hey, don't you? Picking up strange dirt on the road. Um, I'm not sure if I want to go on ahead, you know. Let's get back on the road for a second. Alright, alright. So we know where that is. And... Panoia and Rax Road. Near the lake? Uh, oh, up in at Wax Road. There we go. That's where I want to be. Conway pulls into the bait shop parking lot. Vaulted above the road in a thin steel bar, handwritten signs reads, Live Bait. Minnows small and also large for stripers, night crawlers, chips and beer. Uh, I don't even know what a st is it a striper or is it supposed to be stripper? Um, the green flyer hangs Lucy from it a bit. Uh, a green flyer hangs Lucy from a bit of masking tape at eye level. Uh, to the shop's right, a dirt parking lot sprawls unevenly into grass, and then eventually trees. 
the bait shop is, uh, shop is open. Enter the bait shop, read the flyer, read the flyer. Uh, computer printed type in bold font surrounds the clip art illustrated of a TV set. The TV has eyes, arms and legs. Its shoulders are slouched. On the screen is a cartoon expression of exhausted nausea. A hot water bottle rests against its wire antenna. <laughs> TV repair. No model too old. Inquire within. We do not sell digital converter boxes. Let's enter. Narrow aisles crowded with lures, reels, rods and snacks divide the shop lengthwise from the entrance to the cashier's counter. The left wall is lined with churning tanks of water. Look in the tanks, approach the counter. Let's look in the tanks. The three metal tanks aren't labelled and the water is too agitated to get a clear view of what's inside each one. The contents of the first tank are vaguely grey. The second is a muddy pink. The third is clear, but shiny silver flecks occasionally flash along its surface. Reach to the first tank, reach to the second. Oh wow! So three metal tanks are labelled. The water is the clear, the clear view of the side is one. The contents of the first tank are vaguely grey. The second are muddy pink. The third is clear, but shiny silver flecks occasionally flash along its surface. I'm second tank. Conway's fingers slip through something fleshy but inert. The sensation is nauseating. Blew. I wouldn't do this in real life. Deeper. And his elbow passes into the pinkish mass. He realises he's about to be sick from the smell but, and pulls it away. Oh. Conway's hand brushes against something roughly the size of his palm. Deeper. Conway's hand comes into contact with a scaly, uneven surface as he runs his finger over the bottom. A bead of sweat bridges his, the inches from his temple into the water's surface. Something bites at his forearm. He recoils. Ooh. Uh, reach into the third tank. The water seems to tremble with life. Conway can't tell if his hand is being nibbled by fish or ma massaged by the artificial current. As his eyes near the surface of the water, he can see something colourful glowing faintly at the bottom of the tank. I have a feeling it's either piranha fish or those fish that, you know, clean your feet. <laughs> a tremor spreads from his elbow into his fingertips and pulled up at the base of his shoulder. His vision flickers, the water is running warm under his skin now, and his sensation that something is about to snap. His eyes close. Okay, he lays on a rooftop. New shingles rough beneath his back. Swelling in the noon sun, he is exhausted. They must have started before dawn. His legs are sore from a holding table and uneven surface. His wrists from breaking, old sealant. His fingers from carefully lifting shingles to hammer down new ones. His boss, Ira, yells from the idling truck below. He shades his eyes with his hands. A beer would be good. It's barely past noon, but he's worked a full day already. What could the harm be? Maybe a shot at the counter, just to get his eyes open, then a beer. He could offer to drive into town for lunch and stop at that place on Cumberland. Is this hinting towards him drinking and driving? The cashier pushes Conway roughly on the shoulder. He's been talking, yelling maybe, but it's all an echo now. Conway looks up, his neck stiff with pain. His right palm still tingling. The cashier points to the tank, then above it to a few holes torn in the wall. Nail holes, from which an electric sign has come dislodged and fallen into the water. He helps Conway to his feet, looks up at him pitifully, and returns to the cash register. Narrow aisles crowded with lures, reels and rods and snacks divide the shop lengthwise from the entrance of the cashier's counter. Uh, so the entrance to the cashier's counter. The left wall is lined with churning tanks of water. Okay. A wiry cashier stands behind the register, preoccupied with a Sudoku puzzle. Ask about Shannon's Marquis workshop. Ask about the basketball game. What is this about a basketball game? A handwritten sign on the uh, on the door. Uh, a handwritten sign on the door behind the counter reads. 
TV repairs by appointment, please consult with cashier. The cashier knocks a few times on the door and waits, occasionally glancing at his puzzle. After a few moments with no answer, he notices a small note written on the sign. He reads it, then points it out to Conway. Uh, read the note on the door. Weaver, I got your message. Have left the old mine. Hmm. Don't know if I will see you there or what. Ready either way, Shannon. What is this about a basketball game? Come on. The cashier switches on the radio. An AM sports broadcast is playing, but Conway can't be sure if it's meant to be to answer or to drown out his questions. All right. Uh, let's go to leave the shop. Vaulted above the road uh, on a thin steel bar, a handwritten sign reads, Live and baked minnows, blah, 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 blah. To the shop's right, a dirt parking lot sprawls. Yep. Let's drive away, shall we? So we've seen that now. Do, do, do. Shall we go to where we need to go to? Before we do, uh, okay. It doesn't say anything else, does it? Sod it. On ramp it is. Do, 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 do. That's so bright on my face. <laughs> Such a contrast from being in a completely black room to all of a sudden. <laughs> alright, 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 let's move on. We're almost where we need to be. And we've got probably about five minutes left. Act 1, scene 5. Hang on. Did I just get to Act 1, Scene 3, just by that? That's weird. <sighs> Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. It's $200 for two weeks. Yeah, it's kind... it is kind of an emergency. It kind of is an emergency. No, it's fine. I'll figure it out. Um, I'll figure it out. Inaudible. That's true. I guess he can't tick me. It can't kick me out for another week or two. But I can trust him. But can I trust him not to change the locks? Uh, that's true. Inaudible. Yes, and I appreciate that, but okay, you're right. Just never mind. I have to go. Sorry. Uh, okay, you're right. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you. Forget it. Okay, so she was talking to her partner? Parent, maybe? Stranger. Conway. Excuse me, ma'am. Saw the light on. Uh, saw the light was on, and I'm looking for the on ramp to. Are you here to kick me off the property? Do you believe in ghosts? Oh, no, no. I guess you don't belong here either, do you? Do you work for the power company? Are you just out wondering? The power company? Oh, no, no. I, I once worked for an electrician for a few weeks, but I sort of drifted on before I really learned anything. I get it. You're a nomad. I get it. You're a drunk. You're a nomad. Ha, <laughs> well, I drive a lot. Just me in the road, mostly, when the sun is out. You sound lonely. Is that your job, driving? Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lysette's Antiques, and I'm out trying to finish this job. You were making a delivery to the mine? Oh, uh, no. 
I have a delivery for five Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now I heard I need to take a highway called the Zero. So I met this young lady, name of Weaver Marquez, and she sent me this way. So here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an old ramp, for an on ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway. But that's what it's been like so far anyway with what? Weaver Marquez, do you know her? Zero, is that around here? So you saw her tonight? I know Weaver, she was, she's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Oh, you're the one who fixes televisions? I get it, she tricked me. That's right, she did tell you that too. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. Weaver doesn't lie. One time, when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was a, there was crushed metal everywhere, and we'd been, be hearing it echo through the house for years, she said. I was very upset, crying. And then my dad walked in the door, just came back from a trip to the junkyard collecting scrap metal to fashion, fashion into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke and it wasn't a lie. At the time I thought she meant it was a riddle or a puzzle. But Weaver's not a puzzle, she's a mystery. So maybe the zero is down here somewhere? What are you doing down here? I talked to Weaver earlier this evening. To. Or anyway, she talked to me. It's hard to tell her she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Ein Einkorn. Il Ilkhorn mine. Ilkhorn! Fuck me. <laughs> she said I'd find something I've been looking for. Ooh. And that's my hour. <clears throat> Where did you see Weaver? What are you looking for? Uh, there we go. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. I have a few ideas. I'll know it when I see it. It's not such a bad thing you showing up now. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here though. It's no place for a dog. This is an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're going to go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else. We've got to keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. I've got some gear here to measure conductivity, frequency response, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way to put a signal out ahead. Do some analysis and figure out what kind of topology we're up against. Topology. Okay. Uh, sure, let's go look around. Well, she's going to go, and we are going to stop right there. But, uh, going to summarise how I feel after I've played this. Um, it's interesting. There's a mystery, definitely a mystery. I'm not really sure where this is going to go, but... Um, or even if I'm just going to play as one character. However, I love the art style. Um, I can imagine this is probably the first story that was written over ten years. Is it nine years ago? Ten years ago? Or was it now? Two thousand. I don't can't remember, but it was it was very very a very long time ago. So uh, I'm wondering how much seven years has, has changed the story or changed the way a story should be written for gaming so I guess we'll soon find out <laughs> well I will anyway um, is it fun hmm good point <laughs> good question <laughs> is it interesting definitely if, if if you like mysteries and then maybe this is probably for you but if you're looking for action cool, you're in the wrong place lots of reading um, lots of stylized uh, shots and so on. If you like art direction, hmm. yeah, it seems to be, it seems to be right up there with the, uh, with the graphic design and the and the and the, and the art direction. <sighs> I don't feel like I want to continue to play after an hour though. I mean, I feel like an hour has been enough for now. 
yes, I've reached this next chapter. And it is broken up quite nicely. So you can actually do that, I suppose. Um, but yeah. I don't know, maybe your mileage may vary, it, or the further you get into it, the more interesting it will be, and you'll, it'll pull you through. But for the moment, I'm, it's, it's, there's a lot of mystery. It's not really... There's not much of a game here, it's just a point and click, and I assume that's what the game is going to be like. I'm not going to be make, making any decisions. It's it's going to be literally just choosing a, a, a choosing a, a dialogue option, and maybe the game changes around that. I, I won't know. I won't know until... I'll probably read someone else's review of it, or I play it again. Uh, maybe there is a bit of replay value, if that is the case. If not, then I don't see myself playing through this again. However, is it fun? Meh. Is it interesting? Yes. I think I'll leave it there, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm not really decided either way. But uh, maybe after watching me play this, you're probably falling asleep. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. Um, I appreciate it. And we shall stop right there. So I'll see you next time. All right. Cheers.